good evening, Mayor Ted Knopf, Gold Chickadee Drive. To be clear, are we coming back again on the Dunlop project? What do you mean coming back? It's in the second workshop. I'm just a lot nervous. I can be rolled in here tonight. It's going to be rolled into this at the end of this if you wish to choose to speak at this. I, I, I may call for a special analysis on it if we don't have time. I, I, I really think we have some serious problems that need some, some council attention. I would like to urge my colleagues. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, you know, all these things with a number of things. It's been disheartening to find out the number of things that were changed that I had voted on that I never knew they even bothered to change and no one had a common decency to even tell me that something I voted for had been significantly older or at least explain why or anything. So I do think it's something we need to look at. I think I'm sure my fellow council people feel the same, that uh, we have been let down and uh, better communication is needed. And I can assure you, I am not tolerating it anymore personally. I want good communication. I will work with everybody in a pleasant and decent manner. And I expect in return to be kept notified of things that are done. And so, if we need more time on it, we will have another workshop. Mayor, there appears to be a far more failures here that I can see than what's going to be addressed in a rushed three-minute presentation by your, your residents. For example, uh, we, we got a little taste of public works problems, fewer men. But for the last year, I've seen public works drainage trucks do nothing but tow around lawn equipment. So how much misdirection did we have in works over the last two years? Now that, in essence, comes back to be a charter problem. Because if the manager settles us with a doofus, we're just stuck till that person moves on and dies, retires. Mayor, we've got two. This is not a suicide pact, this, uh, this charter we have here in the city. And if it's got to be looked at in amendment, it needs to be looked at in amendment. The accounting for this project is dismal. I asked the manager a series of questions. How did you come up with this number? That number, we don't know. We're straight in the field. Mayor, that's not accounting. I don't know what that is. And I would ask here again tonight, all of these changes, were they not quantified? Were they not put down in writing? It's called a change order in your, your business layer. I can't believe these numbers weren't quantified at the time. The not involving council in this decision, that's a major insult to our former government. We're just going to let that go. We're not going to address that. We're not going to understand how that came to be. Earlier today, the manager told me all about the professional judgment that was done in eliminating this firm. I haven't heard it yet here tonight. Are we going to hear it tonight? Mr. Gardner raised, it was a larger burr, it was a smaller burr, it was no burr. Now what is the hard analysis that led to that series of decisions? All we heard tonight was some reference to, to Mrs. Grubbs and her, uh, her assertion. So again, Mayor, I just need some direction as a, as, a, as, a, as a resident. Where are you taking this as we go forward here tonight, I guess? Let me, let me come back to, uh, are, you, are you ready to speak about the burr? Sure. Yeah, I, I think he's got Andrews. Got a yeah, it, 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 else I, I, I can speak to why it was shortened. Okay. If you look at the tempo from the bend going north to Herbert, the, the grade is already at seven feet. So after after we had put it in in the first place, we noticed that there were, there was already grades high enough there. We didn't need the burn going from the north of that bend. It's already at seven feet. Essentially, the, the top of the burn is at six. The grade is 4.9, roughly 5.0, 5.2, 5.3. <clears throat> bend, the grades transition above 6. So because water is going to sink its lowest point, it doesn't make sense to put a berm on a, with a 6-foot top elevation above a 6.5-foot topo elevation. Because essentially you'd just be building a berm uphill that's doing nothing. So based on the, the topography, more finite topography, at that point, there is essentially no point in extending that burn northward because you're essentially just running into the grade. You follow what I'm saying as far as the, the, the grade assessment? If you've got a, a 6 up and you, your, the burn dies into a 6-5, it doesn't make sense to put another foot on top of the 6-5 and 7-5 because the water's just going to go down and top of the 6. That's for the area north of the 
Yeah. yeah. That's, right. that's, 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 that's why we're short. That's why we're short that. And that's why the 2000 map that he shows up, all that area, is not flooding, correct? That's why the berm is, the, the question of why was the berm shortened, that is the engineering ex explanation of why it was shortened. And then the question, I guess, for me would be, why wasn't the berm tied into that higher elevation? That's where it was bid to go to, yeah. until the property rights issue was, came up. So are we understanding here tonight that this all went kibosh, went sideways because of the property rights issue, not because of the, the hard engineering? There, there was a need to close the project, and it was the ter determination at that time to close the project. Who made later determinations? I don't know exactly who. I, I think that's a key question. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Gordon, let me speak to the Grubbs property. I met with both of the Grubbs numerous times to go over the issue about the what? Got the 1927 deed rights went to every one of those things, met with them, even discussed acquisition of that property. And if you take a look, you've also got conflicting things because of the right of way, the easements that the Park Farm Light has. They had easements on it. So it wasn't as simple as that. She would sell us all the property for something like 1.6. Oh no. The most crucial part with uh, the mayor explaining what he knows. Nobody else knew on the city council. I can't okay, believe uh, it. The information to the city manager. She met with the city manager. As the right way, you should not to run any people on that. That makes sense. I don't look at it. Right away. She, she was given it, city manager was given it. Who they consulted, I can't speak to that. Mayor, with regard to the closeout of the project, your grants, yeah, speak up a bit, your grants require the closeout by a time certain. And I don't recall the deadline, but that was what was pushing the closeout, is to get the job done within the time that you had to complete it for utilization of the grant money. So that, that was the pressure point. Mayor, I believe Mr. Gardner has got correspondence in the last day or two from FEMA, and FEMA thinks the project is still open. I can't speak for what Mr. Gardner has. Last question, I'll sit down, Mayor. So did I understand the engineers to say there's no engineering problem here, the work could go in and be effective, we just tie into the higher elevation north of the bend? Yes. Well, what about the old red herring over here? Well, may it may all spill over at the lot and right at the... There, there's many places that the water can get around. This is just a starting point trying to help the Dunlop problem. And if, if the city wants to go further and looking at other issues like that, we can. Thank you.